friends, it's Christy. So excited to be back with you on the Lawn Fawn YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a cart using the brand new Treat Cart add-on coffee, plus Treat Cart, Absolutely Awesome, Hey There Hay Rides, You Goat This, A Creature Was Stirring, and Porcupine For You. I've stamped the images I'll be using on two sheets of Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock with Jet Black Ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with some neutral tones, and the first shades I'm using are E50, E51, and E40. I'm going to color my bunny with this combo for a nice little buff colored bunny. I'm using that E51 first to lay in a bit of shadow, blending out toward the face with the E50, and then I just go in with a little E40 to kind of mute that a bit and make it a bit softer. I'm also going to use these shades for the white areas of my fox, so his face and his belly and the tip of his tail, and I will use them for my uh, owl's belly as well, so just the same way. And each of those I'm leaving a little bit of white space for an extra highlight. Then I'll move on to E43. E44 and E47, and I'm going to use this for the outer part of my owl. So I'm taking the E47 and laying my shadows down the left hand side of the body since he's facing toward the right, blending out with that E44, and then using the E43 for the highlighted areas towards the center of the forehead, top of the wings, and right next to the belly area. I'm also going to use these shades for my bear, but I'm going to shade him a little bit differently since he's facing completely forward. He's going to get equal shadows on both the left and the right. That way I can keep the face nice and light. So again, just repeating that same process, coloring darkest to lightest. And I did also put a little extra shadow under his chin area with the mid-tone, that E44 before I blended everything out with the lightest shade, the E43. And I'm also going to use these shades for the body of my baby porcupine. So this time I'm shading on the right hand side since he's facing toward the left. And just trying to make sure that I don't color over the eye too darkly so that you're still able to see his adorable little features. Then I'm going to add in E42, take away the E47. I'm going to do the lid of my to-go coffee cup. And then that little band across the center, I wanted it to look like those little cardboard sleeves that you get at the coffee shop. And so I just use those shades for that. Then I'm switching to W00 with E70 and E71. And this is what I'm going to use for my porcupine quills. I'll also color my mouse with this combo on the second sheet. I'll be coloring that one off screen just to save some time in the video, but I'll be using the same combos that I'm using on the images on this first sheet. I'm also going to use those shades to color in my little coffee maker. I put a little extra shadow on the lower part since that would be cast in more shadow. And then I am going to take away the E71 and add in the W1. And I'm going to do every other stripe on the awning of my treat cart, starting with that E70. And I'm going to do the bars that are coming down on the sides and also the top rim and the lower rim and the handle. Not the grip part, but the metal part of the handle. So starting with the E70 for all of those, and then I'm going over the edge of that with the W1. And once I have that laid in, I'm going to come in with that W00 for a nice highlight and just fill everything else in. I wanted to have kind of like a softer neutral that would tie in with the colors of the critters, but still be a little bit distinct. So that's how I came up with this combo for those white areas. I also colored in the centers of the wheels. And then I'm going to use just the W1 and W00 for my to-go coffee cup and my two coffee mugs. And once again, leaving a little bit of white space for the highlight. 
Then I'm gonna move on to some rust shades. I'm using YR12, YR14, and YR18 for my fox. Using the YR18 on the right, since he's facing toward the left. Also placing that down at the lower part of the tail where it's connected to his body. Then blending out with the YR14 and then using the YR12 for the highlight and bringing that in toward the belly. I'll also use these shades to color in my owl's beak and feet. And I'm going to do my pumpkins that are on the second page that are from Hey There Hay Rides. And I'm also going to add some of these rust tones to my leaves. So I want my leaves to be multicolored, so I'm just adding a little dab here and there, and then I'll blend that out, giving each leaf a little bit of that rust tone on a different area, making sure to leave some room for the other shades that I will be bringing in as well. They won't all have all of the shades that I will add, but they will all have a little bit of the rust tone, so that will pull them all together. Then I'm gonna bring in some aqua shades, but it's a little bit more of a muted aqua that I think is really striking for fall. And that is BG10 with BG53 and BG57. And I'll do every other stripe on my awning and then also the middle part on the bottom of the cart and the grip on the handle. So I'm putting that BG57 down first in the shadowed areas blending out with the BG-53, and then I brought in the BG-10 for a little bit of a highlight. That's also going to brighten things up a bit, as that BG-10 is a much softer and more pure color. So just blending toward the center on that middle part at the bottom, and working over the edges until I'm happy with how it's looking. And then I'm also going to use that BG-10 for the plastic to-go cup. And I'll use the BG-57, blend it out with the BG-53, and then the BG-10 for the straw. So the BG-10 is going to be the part that is in the liquid. I also use these shades for my muffin liner. And I'm going to use them on my chalkboard so that matches the cart. And for that one, I'm just placing the shadows on the outer edges and blending toward the center, just like I did on the lower middle part of the treat cart. And I did not stamp anything on that menu board yet, but I will be adding something to that a little bit later on in the video. I'm going to add a little bit of this blue into the leaves as well. I think it's just a fun, unexpected color to have for fall. So just a touch of that and only using the BG-53 on the BG-10 so it doesn't get too bright. Then I'll bring in some red tones. I'm using R35, R37, and R39 for my candy apple, just for the apple part. And I actually skipped over the R37 on this one by accident, but then I brought in the R20 and I really liked the way that looked. So I'm actually going to use all four of these shades on the additional apples that are on the second sheet. And then I'm going to throw some of these red tones into the fall leaves as well. Those leaves are really going to help pull the entire color palette together since they're representing all of the bright shades. And then I wanted to give these critters some rosy cheeks while I had that R20 out and also color in the nose of my bunny and my porcupine. For the bear and the porcupine, I also added a little bit of that R35 because the R20 wasn't quite dark enough. For the rest of the critters, I brought in R11 to blend out that cheek area. Then I'll switch to E33. E35 and E39 for the caramel part of my candy apple. And I am adding that highlight in the center area where it is the most rounded, so that would be reflecting the most light. I'm also going to do the lower part of my donut and also my cake pop. So I'm imagining maybe an apple cider donut and maybe a maple cake pop. And then I'll just go slightly lighter using E30, E31, and E33 for my muffin top. I'll use the E30 for the stick on my candy apple and my cake pop. 
and then I'm going to use the E33, E31, and then just a touch of that E30 for the glaze. And I'm leaving just a tiny bit of white at the very edges of those drips for a highlight. Then I'm going to switch to some golden tones so I can do some apple cider in my to-go cup using YR20, YR21, and YR24. I also did my hay bale from You Goat This on the second sheet with this combo and threw a little bit of these shades into more of my fall leaves. And then my last combo is W3, W5, and W7. I'm going to use these shades for the wheels on my treat cart. Rather than going with black, I wanted something that just matched with the fall cozy tones that I've already been using. And I'm going to use it for the center of my menu board so I can make it look like a chalkboard. So I'm going to place the darkest color on the outer edges and then blend toward the center so it has kind of like that chalk dust look. And then I'm going to trim all of these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I've taken a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock and die cut that with the largest of the large stitch rectangle stackables. And I am going to be blending on my background with some Distress Oxide inks. For the sky, I'm going to use the Cloudy Stencil and some Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink. And then I'm going to mute that down just slightly using some Speckled Egg. I wanted to have those kind of dustier tones to match the turquoise shades that I used for the coloring. So I'm adding a little bit of that salvage patina and then just going right over that with some of that speckled egg. And then I'll turn that stencil so I get a new cloud formation and add another layer of clouds. Just making sure to hold that stencil firmly in place and then blend over the edge and then kind of lift up on the pressure as I go up the page so it gets a more hazy and kind of dreamy. And I'll do one more cloud formation, but I'm just gonna do it really lightly because I know my grass is gonna overlap part of this. I wanted my grass to go about halfway up the page. So just adding a little bit of color so that last layer of clouds isn't so stark white. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to do some splatter detail before I move on to my grass. So I'll press some of both of those inks onto an acrylic block, add a tiny bit of water to those to make them a bit more fluid, and then I'll mix that up with a thin paintbrush and tap it off the edge. So I just get some nice little splatter details. And then I'm going to let this dry completely before I move on to the next step because my next stencil is going to go over that portion. So I'm going to take the slimline grassy stencil and line that up about halfway down the card. And I'll bring in mowed lawn and twisted citron distress oxide inks. I'm going to start with the mowed lawn right at the grass line so that it's a little bit darker there. And then go down to the twisted citron to blend that out. I'll work back and forth between those two shades a little bit until I'm happy with how that blend is looking. And then I'm going to reposition that stencil about halfway down that section. And I shifted it slightly to the right so that it doesn't line up perfectly with the row above. Went back to my mode lawn and then a little bit of the twisted citron down at the bottom. I'm being a little bit more heavy handed with the mode lawn on the second part because I wanted there to be a separation between the two. Then I'll use that stencil to just cover my cloudy sky so I can do some splatter on my grass and not get any of that green ink in my sky. So I'll do the twisted citron at first and then just go in with that mode lawn and add a little bit of that speckled detail so that it's uh, all throughout the entire background. Once I'm happy with how that's looking, I'm going to set this panel aside to dry once again. And in the meantime, I'm going to start doing my stamping. The first thing I'm going to do is actually my stamping on that little menu board. And I'm going to do some heat embossing. So I just treated that with the Rabbit Hole Designs powder tool. And then I'll ink up the phrase that I want with some Versamark ink. There's a few different ones to choose from, but I went with the one that says chai pumpkin spice. 
I'll pick that up with my EK Success Reverse Tweezers and I'm going to add some Lawn Fawn white embossing powder to that. I just keep it in this big tub so that it's easier to pour. And once I have that coated, I will bring my heat gun to that until that powder is all melted and white. So it looks like it's been written with chalk. Then I'm gonna work on my sentiment. So I'm adding some chocolate bar cardstock to my Misty and treating that once again. This is going to be another heat embossing. And the sentiment that I decided to go with is wishing you a beautiful day. So the words wishing you and a brutiful are from the new treat cart add on coffee, but the word day is from the original treat cart stamp set. So I kind of combine the two to make my own custom sentiment. I'll treat that with some more of the embossing powder and then bring my heat gun to that as well. I like to come at it from the back and the front to minimize some of the warping and just melt that powder until it's nice and bright. It's always like magic when it starts to come to life. And then I'm going to pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using some speckled eggshell cardstock and I'm stamping on the inside in fake tan ink. And I'm going to do a trail of treats down the right side of the card and then the sentiment down at the bottom says, treat yourself. I just thought that would be a little bit fun and different. So now I'm ready to start assembling and I am going to take my background and glue that to the front of my card base using the glue tube. It's going to match the same size as an A2 standard size card. So just lining up the corners to make sure it's on there straight. And then I will bring in my images so I can start to stage this scene. There aren't quite a lot of them there, but I love doing a nice full scene card. It just gives me so much to look at. I'm going to add my bear to the back of my treat cart. He is going to be the one that is running this little coffee stand. And then I'll add the coffee maker right next to him. So his hand is kind of raised up toward it. And then over to the right hand side, I'm going to have that menu board. I'm placing that pretty high up on the scene. And then right below that, I'm going to add that little trio of pumpkins from Hey There Hay Rides to kind of anchor it into the scene. And then I'm going to add the little banner of leaves to the treat cart so that it has that fall flair. Then I'll take the bushel of apples from Absolutely Awesome and I'm going to add that down at the bottom left. It's kind of diagonal from those pumpkins so it adds a bit of visual weight down there. And then in the center I'll have that hay bale which is actually going to serve as the table at this little outdoor fall fest. And to dress that up I'll add the other garland of leaves. I just trimmed off the ends so it would fit. And then on top of that, I will add the plate from the A Creature Was Stirring. And then that's going to get some little fall treats sitting on top of that. I'm going to add my sentiment over in the left top corner. So I'm going to go ahead and add that now so I make sure that I save room for it. I'm adding those at a bit of an angle in those three separate strips so they look a little bit more whimsical and kind of twisting and turning them in different directions. And then I'll start to bring in the rest of my critters and kind of figure out where everybody is going to live on this little scene here. I knew I wanted the mouse that is eating the apple to be in front of the bushel of apples as if he's just taken one off there and he's munching down. And then the bunny is going to be up at the treat cart toward the left placing his order. And then the fox and the baby porcupine are going to go over on the bottom right. On my little plate, I'm going to place the candy apple. And then I'll start adding some of these drinks into my critter's hands. The owl is going to hold the coffee cup. So I'm making sure to place him far enough back that it doesn't cover up too much of that candy apple. And I will shift that candy apple over just a little bit more toward the right so you can see it better. The baby porcupine is going to be holding the cake pop, so I'm going to add that to his paw. 
And then on that tray, I'm going to add the muffin and the donut. I put the muffin up a little bit high so it wouldn't get covered up completely. And then the donut down in front so that it's kind of like a little pile of fall festive treats. Then all that's left is my leaves. So I've got two of those little trios and then a bunch of the single leaves that I'm going to add here and there just sprinkled throughout the card so it can really pull that color palette together as I mentioned earlier. I'm also going to take two of the leaves and have those kind of flying through the air on the top right corner of the card to balance out the sentiment on the left. And then all that's left is to add a little bit of glitter. So I will add that to my glaze on my treats and my caramel on my candy apple. I'm also going to add it to my drinks and to all of the leaves. Just a little touch to each of those so they have a little flash of sparkle when you tip them into the light. I even added it to the fall little leaf banners. And that is going to finish up this card. I will lift that up to the light so you can see all of the details and give you another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to read your feedback. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.